really hope that we can uh, foster the notion of the best solution versus right answer. That there is typically an answer to a question, but our approach is just or even more important than the right answer. And that will be our primary focus. I want to emphasize again with statistics. It's really a communication activity. Probably, I, I think math is in general, but statistics really takes it up a degree. That a number in front of you has a lot more meaning than just what's being shown to you. So the, the thing that I really find, uh, that, that I really see uh, showing, showing what you know about statistics will be those chapter projects. To determine our two questions of the day, which is the best tasting water, and uh, basically which sample do you think is the FDFW, the Fisher's Drinking Fountain Water, uh, each of you will be given a sample of three cups, which has each of the waters in them. And you can decide however you want to basically taste the three waters. You can mix up the order of what have you. And um, then you're going to report to me what, which one you thought was the best tasting one. Before we get to that, I did have a question. Yeah, here's a key question. What do you think would be evidence that one of the three waters was actually better or best tasting as compared to the others? What do you think? Well, maybe the first question is better, sorry. Um, like to me, I don't think I have a very distinct palate to tell the difference. I, I think I could just randomly guess which one's Ice Mountain. So if I were just randomly got lucky and picked Ice Mountain, what would be the chances that would happen? Raise your hand if you can tell. I'm going to give you three cups here. What, what are the chances I would randomly pick the name brand of water? What percentage do you think it would take to be evidence that one water tastes better than the other two? All right, here's the challenge. I want to walk through this equation. I want us to use the same method that Harrison was talking to us about yesterday, working backwards, and apply that method to the equation and set the unit of the numbers. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this uh, just a little without all my markers on it. So if we work backwards, uh, where am I going to start? What's the first thing I'm going to do? Okay, is that the, where, is that the very first thing we do? Okay, where do we have to start? So that's what we did yesterday when Harrison was walking us through the problem. Now we're going to show that with the actual equation. We're going to translate what Harrison was doing with the numbers to the equation. Okay? So what's my new equation going to look like? What's the next thing I'm going to do? So if I do that, well, how can I combine this? What does that look like? Well, first of all, let me ask you this. In the context of the problem, what does this 4 represent? So with all the people that were getting on, what operation did I do? Why didn't we divide by you don't want to subtract half a person, okay? That's cruel and bloody. So you just want to take half the people off the bus. We're going to divide the number of people that are on the bus by two, okay? So how do we know that the, the two comes last in this equation? What about this equation? So uh, how can I figure out what x is now? I'm going to ask you one more question. It just occurred to me. I want to, I think, I think, uh, I think it's a good question to discuss. What, what about this equation? Is that good, bad, different? Do me a favor, turn to the person beside you, tell them either one thing you understand about this or one question you have. So, any questions come out in that quick discussion that you want to uh, bring to your brain? 
let's say that we had a problem where we just had an equation and the different people in one story is over. Okay, so we just have an equation. How do we know the order that things happen? How do we know that three people got on the bus first, then four people got off? How do we know that order? Questions on the bus problem, or 